Welcome to Soup Dog Recipes. Today we're making Dan Dan noodles. It's a Sichuan classic, and I think it is the most delicious and flavorful noodle dish. I've been getting lots of requests for this recipe, and、um, today is the day. <laughs> I'll be showing you how to make everything from scratch and how to make it authentic as well. So let's get started. Let me be honest. This is not an easy recipe. It takes quite some effort to get the real street style. It has more than ten kinds of toppings and seasonings. Don't need to be afraid. Let's put everything on the table. I'll go through them one by one as detailed as possible. Start with the egg noodles. Just to be clear, you don't need to make it at home. Almost any Oriental market have it in stock. It will be in the refrigerator section or frozen section. Although this is the specific noodle type that you will use to make dan dan noodles, other types of noodles are welcome too. I have tried spaghettis, rice noodles, mung bean noodles. They all taste fantastic. Today I'll be using a KitchenAid to do this. In the mixing bowl, combine the following ingredients: 450 grams of high gluten flour. Here are a few brands and types that I recommend. Technically, all-purpose flour will also work, but because it is low in gluten, the texture will come out a little less chewy. Add two whole eggs. Depends on the size of the eggs and the types of flour you are using. The water amount is also different. It will be around 80 to 110 grams. Don't worry about that because I will show you how to adjust it to make sure you have the right amount of water and flour ratio. Don't forget to add a teaspoon of salt. Get a spatula and do a pre-mix before you run the machine. If you don't have a KitchenAid, you can make the noodles by hand. I have a demo video for that. I'll put the video link in the description. Use the dough hook attachment. We will run it on the lowest speed for 15 to 18 minutes in total. During this time, make sure you come back and check the dough every five minutes. Touch to feel the moisture level. If it's too soft and sticky. Add a little more flour. Keep kneading until the flour is well mixed. As I mentioned before, every egg is different, and the type of flour you use could be different. So it is hard to give you an exact water amount. This is how I check if the dough is good to go. Make sure your hand is clean and dry. Grab a piece of dough, squeeze it really tight, and then let go. If the dough sticks to your hand like that, you need to add more flour. Keep kneading it until you don't see any dry flour. Let's check the dough again. Use your clean and dry hand to squeeze it tightly, then let go. The dough should release immediately from your hand, and it shouldn't stick at all. This dough has a very low water ratio, which is what we need, or else it will be really hard to work with when you try to roll the dough into sheets. Roughly knead these large chunks of dough together, cover it, let it rest for thirty minutes. Now let's take a look of the KitchenAid pasta maker attachments. This one helps you to roll the dough into sheets. It has an adjustable knob which will decide the thickness of your sheet. The other two will help you to cut the noodles. For this recipe, we will be using the thin one. The dough has been rested for thirty minutes. Take it out. The amount I gave is enough to make six portions of noodles. So we will divide it into six even pieces. You can scale it if you want. I just go with my eyes. Roughly flatten each piece with your hands so it can go through the machine easily. Put on the attachment. Start with the first thickness. Let the dough piece go through the machine. You see me piling the dough sheets together. That is because I made sure my dough has a low water flour ratio. If your dough is too moist, you cannot pile them together, or else they will stick to each other. After the dough went through the machine, I like to shape it into a rectangle. 
these straight edges and lines will make sure your noodles come out with the same length. Still use the first thickness. Let the dough go through the machine again. This time, it will become a nice rectangle sheet. Now you can adjust the thickness. I like to go one step at a time. If you jump the thickness from one to four, the sheet won't come out as smooth as it could be. Also, the sheets will stick to each other easier as they get thinner and thinner. Even when I do it, I have to unfold it and separate it carefully. If you need to apply some cornstarch to prevent the stickiness, please do that. You don't want a big mess after all that work. I know I talked a lot. I just can't help myself. Sometimes the smallest detail makes a big difference. For dun dun noodles, I like to use setting four as the final thickness. Once everything is done, sprinkle lots of cornstarch. Apply it evenly on both sides. I know some people will use flour to prevent stickiness. When making noodles, you have to use starch because starch doesn't contain gluten, so it will just cover the surface instead of mixing into the dough. It is good for storing. The noodles will stay loose even if you let it sit in the fridge for a few days. Switch the attachment. Add more cornstarch in the tray. Now we will cut the noodles. You see some small and short pieces dropping down. That is why I like to make sure the sheet is rectangle, or else it will create even more of these small pieces. Once the noodles are cut. Lightly move them around in the cornstarch to prevent stickiness, and shake off the excess starch. These noodles are freezer friendly. Just put them in a sealable container. They will last four to six months in the freezer. They will also stay good in the fridge for four to five days. Now you have your noodles made. Let's go to the next ingredient. This is what we call sauce. It is made with ground pork, very flavorful and smells amazing. You will need the ground pork that has a 50% fat ratio. I can't find it around where I live, so I'm grinding my own today. This nice skinless pork belly is perfect. If you decided to go with lean ground pork, that is okay too. But you need to do a little twist. I will talk about that later. Get your wok ready. Add a tiny amount of oil, about one and a half teaspoon. The pork is already fatty. This oil is just to lubricate the wok. Throw in some minced garlic. Once it starts sizzling, turn the heat to high and add the ground pork. Spread it out. Use your spatula to loosen up the meat. If you use the pork that has less than twenty percent fat. You only need to cook it until you don't see any pink color. That way, the pork will have a better texture. If you stir fry the lean ground pork until it's golden brown, all the meat protein has seized up. It will have a rough and hard texture. That doesn't feel good. However, the pork I'm using today has more than fifty percent fat. I can fry it until it's golden brown. And that develops lots of great flavors. I don't know how to explain this. If you ever had the solid part that you get after you render the lard from the pork fat, you will know how tasty it is. Nice and crispy, so delicious. Once it looks like this, you can add the seasonings: two and a half tablespoons of Chinese cooking wine, one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce. The steam blocked the camera. Sorry about that. Keep adding some black pepper just to taste. Half tablespoon of sweet bean paste. This is what I'm using. I'll put the Amazon link in the description. Stir everything until all the flavors are well combined. This tastes so good. Even if you don't want to make dun dun noodles because it's so much work, you can just throw in some leftover rice. Boiled spaghetti or some eggplant that is seasoned with salt. Mix it around, and boom, 
you have your dinner. <laughs> anyway, we're done with making the sauce. Turn off the heat. There will be lots of fat. You can drain that out if you don't like it. I suggest you to keep it. Think of it like the bacon fat. It just brings up the whole dish to another level. I want you to give it a taste to adjust the flavor because lean pork and fat pork do need different amount of sodium. And it is better to be a little saltier than your normal taste because it's a topping. Let's keep going with the next ingredient, sesame paste. The name says it's sesame paste, but it's actually a mix of 1 tablespoon of 100% sesame butter, 1 tablespoon of pure peanut butter, and 2 tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. Very simple. Mix it up. I think of this as a magic ingredient. Just a little bit, it makes the noodles so nutty and creamy. Helps to bind all the flavors together. Set it aside and I will talk about the Sichuan chili oil. We call it Yu Po La Zi. It is one of the basic and must have ingredients. I have used it in many of my recipes. Since I already made a separate demo video, today I'm just gonna quickly quickly go through it. Two and a half cup of vegetable oil, heat it with medium heat, season it with lots of aromatics and spices, until they are nicely charred. Take them out. In a big bowl, add Sichuan peppercorn powder, chili flake, sesame seeds, and salt. Pour in the hot chili oil in batches, and it's done. It will last 4 months in room temperature or a year in the fridge. Another important ingredient for Dan Dan noodles is Sui Mi Ya Cai. It is preserved minced vegetable, has a nice fermented flavor and umami taste. It also got a crunchy texture. This is how the package looks. I'll put the Amazon link in the description. However, if you don't have access to it, you can use some diced kimchi or other types of pickles. You don't need to do anything to it, just put it in the bowl and use it as a topping. On the side here, I got some toasted and crushed peanuts. It adds even more nuttiness and crunchiness to the dish. Okay, I think we're ready to assemble the noodles. Before we do that, let me briefly explain the history. It was developed from the street. Sellers carry it in two big baskets with a long pole, which is called danzi. That is why we named it Dan Dan Noodles. In one of the baskets, there is a small stove, a water pot, and saozi. Noodles, seasonings, utensils, bowls, and clean water are in the other basket. Due to the limited space, the noodles were served in a small bowl like this. The amount is only enough for 4 bites. And I will eat 4 or 5 times of that, so let's just use a bigger bowl today. A couple of teaspoons of sesame paste, 2-4 to four tablespoons of Sichuan chili oil, depends on your own preference, a quarter teaspoon of sugar, you won't taste the sweetness, but you need it to balance all that tanginess. Sprinkle some Sichuan peppercorn powder to taste. Be very careful. It brings a tingling and numbness to your tongue. If you never had it before, use a small amount first so you don't overpower your noodles. This is what I'm using. I'll put the Amazon link in the description. Continue adding 2 tablespoons of soy sauce. 1 tablespoon of Chinese black vinegar or Zhenjiang vinegar. These are what I'm using. If you don't have access to the vinegar, you can use a balsamic vinegar. Pressing 1 clove of garlic. On the side here, prepare a pot of boiling water. Fresh noodles cook really fast. It just needs a couple of minutes. Use a tablespoon to scoop out 4 to 5 tablespoons of water and add it to the bowl. There are recipes tell you to use stock, but dandan noodles are extremely flavorful. 
you really can't tell the difference, no matter if you are using water or stock. When the noodles are almost ready, throwing a couple of pieces of baby bok choy or any other green leafy vegetables, take out the noodles and add it to the bowl along with the baby bok choy. Top a few tablespoons of shaozi. It took too long to make this recipe. <laughs> Part of the pork lard is already set, but it will melt because the noodles are hot. One to two tablespoons of sui mi ya cai. It is quite salty, so be very careful with the amount. Sprinkle some toasted and crushed peanuts. Last, let's finish it with a little bit of green onions. Look at that! All that work just for a bowl of noodles. We don't have time to admire it because you need to mix it up immediately, or else it will be hard to mix when it gets cold. Also, I'm starving after all, so I need to eat now. <laughs> I know the difficulty already scared many people away, but if you take one bite, you will just agree all that work is paid off. It tastes insanely delicious. Nice and hot, it is so savory and tangy. Has a little bit of numbness from the Sichuan peppercorn powder. It also got lots of textures. The noodles is so fresh and chewy. The ya cai and the peanuts provides some crunchiness. It's mind blowing. I hope you give this a try soon. If you did, leave me a comment and let me know how it goes. As always, you can click the link in the description and find the printable recipe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.